Okay, today we're going to be looking at inter-VLAN routing in terms of the 40-gate firewall. So you may have heard about a router on a stick, right? So now we're going to do firewall on a stick in terms of the 40-gate firewall. Now just a basic review of what we have done up until now is that we have configured the VAN interfaces. Uh, so I have my primary ISP and I have set the administrative distance for this ISP's default route to be 4. Um, if I were to show you as of right now, uh, the, uh, the distance is 4. And I also have the secondary ISP up and running and it's at its default distance of 5. So this guy actually um, gets up in the routing table. So we have that. Uh, enabled over here so you can see the distance is 4 and this is uh, in terms of our, of our van side we haven't actually tested the failover as of right now in terms of the ISP but we will do that in the next video for this video we are going to be super focused on inter-VLAN routing now um, in terms of inter-VLAN routing you would remember that we configured two SVIs on this 40 gig firewall which were VLAN 25 SVI and VLAN 35 SVI. So if I were to show you, uh, these were the SVIs that were created with IP addresses of 192.168.25.1 and 35.1. The third octet which I'm using is the VLAN number uh, which is a best practice. You don't have to really do that but we are doing that um, in terms of best practices. Now the two VLANs even if they have IP addresses configured on them as you can see over here we have uh, 25 and 35.1 and 25.1 both of the IP addresses have been configured but they cannot still communicate with each other. So here is a diagram uh, specifying the inter VLAN routing in terms of the 48 firewall. So we have three VLANs at our disposal and we will use which we will use in this lab. VLAN 25, 35 and 199. 25 is where I am at right now. My computer on which I'm recording all of this. I reside on VLAN 25 and my IP address is 192.168.25.0/24. So this is my exact IP address. It's dot five. And uh, I have a Windows 2012 server residing on VLAN 35 and its IP address is 35.200. And I also have an ESXi server which resides on 199.100. Specifically, its management resides on that. So uh, as you know, X is the VLAN number. Uh, so this is how it's all going. And this is a core switch and the 40 gate firewall. And in between them, as you have seen in the, in the last video, it's a trunk link. Okay. So if I were to jump on my computer and do a ping to my gateway, which is 192.168.25.1, I can sure enough do that. Uh, but I cannot actually ping 35.200, which is my Windows Server 2012 server. Now, everything is up in terms of the layer 1 and layer 2 connectivity, but there is uh, some policy that is stopping that on the 40 gig firewall. And if you were to jump on the policy and objects in the firewall policy, you can see there's only one policy created uh, that is set to allow and that is going from the SVI or VLAN 25 going towards WAN 1. Uh, this will only hit uh, when it's going towards the WAN 1 interface and apart from that everything is an implicit deny. So everything is falling to this bucket hole as of right now in terms of communication. So that is why VLAN 25 cannot communicate with 35 as of right now. Okay, so now let's create a policy that will allow VLAN 25 users to communicate with VLAN 35 users. So I hit create new and I could specify a policy named uh, SVI 25 to underscore SVI 35. You should name this policy in terms of what the policy will do. Uh, so the incoming interface will be 25, SVI 25, right? And the outgoing interface will be SVI 35. So after that, we need to specify what the source IP address or the source subnets will be and what the destination subnets will be. So these are mandatory. So you have to go in and uh, it will pop up this select entries tab in which you have all of these objects that are pre-created or already created. Okay. 
So there are some addresses that you created when you were assigning IP addresses to the SVIs. Remember that? Uh, if you don't remember that, I will show you just in a minute. Um, but you could also create objects if you want to create new ones. They could also uh, specify the same subnets if you want. Just the name should be different. So I'll just create an object for uh, my subnet, which is 192.168.25.0, residing on VLAN 25. So what I would like to do, what I always like to do, is to change the color so that I know this is the one I created uh, when I'm looking at those objects. So um, the type will be submit. You can specify a range, fully qualified domain name, max, and all. Uh, but we will only specify the subnet. The subnet is 192.168.25.0/24. And uh, if you tie this to an interface, for example, if I tie this to only VLAN 25, uh, what will happen is that um, it will only show for um, Hang on, let me show you. If I were to go to destination IP addresses, destination objects, you see that object is not showing up anymore because that is not exactly correlating with the outgoing interface, right? But it will show up for the source interface because that is correlating with the incoming interface. You get it? Um, and apart from that, we had a static route configuration. Actually, you can use this object once you're creating static routes. Um, normally, when you're, whenever you're creating static routes, you have to define an IP address and a subnet. Uh, if you don't want to do that, you could uh, click this option and you can use this object. This object name will pop up in the static routes configuration and you can specify based on that. So it's your call if you want to do that. So let's do that and we'll see that in the static route section soon that this entry will pop up. So clicking on OK. So I just click on one time and the object comes in in the source field. Now you can have multiple objects here. It kind of like acts as an or statement then if you have multiple objects. Uh, but for us, there's only one subnet resigning on uh, this interface. And the outgoing object will be uh, 192.168.35.0/24 subnet. Uh, we don't have that created as of right now, and um, let's create that. So let's create that object group OBG and 192.168.35.0/24. Change the color so that I know that that I created this one, and 192.168.35.0/24. You could be really specific if you want to uh, and specify only IP addresses, but um, I'm not going to do that in this lab. So I'm going to make it kind of like a router scenario where everything was allowed between the subnets. So in your organization, it may be a little different because this is a home network that I'm deploying this on. So I don't have any problems doing this. Uh, so do sure to check out the compliance of your, t uh, of your organization and then apply these policies accordingly. So clicking on OK, and as you can see, I've got the object created now, and just click it, and there it is. We've got that destination object inside of the policy. Now there's a schedule, as we discussed in the previous lecture, if you want specific times that a policy should be in place. Uh, which I will do because my kids actually actually use uh, YouTube a lot, so I need to block them uh, from using YouTube for a specific amount of time. We'll do that later. And then we have service. These are the TCP IP and IP protocol, uh, full IP stack protocol, sorry, in which you have um, um, IP protocol numbers like OSPF uses 89 as the IP protocol numbers, or if you want to be specific for HTTP or anything, you can do that. For this instance, I'm going to allow the full IP stack. So I'm going to be clicking allow all, sorry. And action is set to accept or deny if these policies match in one way or the other, uh, what will be the action? If you want to accept the packet, obviously you will uh, hit accept. And you want to deny them, you can hit deny and everything else is grayed out, you can see. Uh, so we'll just accept that. Inspection mode, we will check that out later because it correlates with the security profile. As you can see, we have some other filters coming out like the video filter. 
we will look at that later okay the other thing is NAT should be disabled at all costs because um, not at all costs it actually depends on your scenario uh, because I want this PC to communicate to uh, my server with its original IP address of 192.168.25 uh, there could be a case where you don't want that to happen. You could enable NAT so the packet will go from my PC towards the gateway and uh, VLAN 35 will NAT it as in uh, the server will see an IP address of 192.168.35.1 which is the SVI's um, interface over here on th VLAN 35. So that could be a case if you want to do that. You can enable NAT on it. But in, usually you don't do that when you're doing internal VLAN routing on a router or on a layer 3 switch. Um, apart from that, everything we will leave as default. We will check all of these options. Don't worry. A lot of good stuff is coming your way in this series. And we're going to test each of them out. So hitting OK. And as you can see, the policy has been created. Now let's see if... I can now ping this guy. So sure enough, I can ping this guy. Um, let's do an RDB session to it. Let's do a remote desktop. Uh, 192.168.35.200. And we're inside the server now. So communication is happening. Now let's try to actually ping uh, the host, which is me on VLAN 25 sitting on the 35 uh, VLAN so it's gonna be 25.5 which is my IP address and as you can see I'm getting blocked I cannot access 25 um, subnets now why is that well for that I have made a slide let me just minimize this now how this works with a firewall in between is that VLAN 25 hosts can talk to VLAN 35 hosts because the firewall actually creates a session table in which it knows, okay, uh, 192.168.25.5 was talking to 192.168.35.200, so I will create a session table for the return traffic. In no way will the firewall allow the initial packet coming from 192.168.35.200 in this case to be um, to be routed towards 192.168.25.5 because it violates the rule and there is no rule over here specifying if the source interface and subnet is 35 what will be the case so there is no rule so it's hitting the implicit deny rule over here so if we want to allow VLAN 35 to actually access the hosts on VLAN 25, uh, what, what can we do over here is we have an option uh, that we just right click over here and clone reverse. So it will create a reverse entry like that in a disabled state. So you can actually go ahead and edit um, whatever you want to edit. So let's go into that entry. So as you can see, everything is kind of reversed now. So the incoming interface it has been changed from 25 to 35. The source has been changed uh, from 25 to 35 and vice versa for uh, the outgoing interface and the destination IP addresses. So we will just say SVI, we we'll just name that 35 to SVI 25, oops, 25, uh, we will hit OK and the rule is disabled by default now if I were to go to the remote desktop over here let's do a ping to 25.5 with a continuous ping and let's minimize that for a minute and let's just enable this policy set status to enable now let's go to our as you can see and now pings have started to work now we have a full two-way traffic uh, back and forth uh, if you have only one policy it will only facilitate one side of the session it won't facilitate the other side it's it's normal actually uh, firewalls do that have been doing that for a lot of uh, time so this is how you create an inter vlan kind of a style firewall on a stick approach if you have this kind of a design